Our next guest is a uh, guy, she's a uh, funny man, and he will be performing his uh, one-man show June 9th uh, through the 11th at the Ruth Page Theater in Chicago, Illinois. It's entitled, An Evening of Laughter and Memories of Sinatra. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Tom Dreesen. Tom, come on out. Of Well, I want to tell you something. I've known you for a long time. You've never looked better. How do you feel? Are you in good shape? I feel, I feel terrific. Good. Yeah. I had a physical last week. Hey, well, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Doctor said uh, you're in good shape. He told me told me something interesting. He said, and this is true. He said you should have sex twice a week. And, oh. and I'm serious. It was in Time Magazine. This uh -huh. I, said, I said why? He said because men who have sex twice a week live longer oh. than those who don't. Yeah. So it's a good thing I got divorced. I'd have been dead five years ago. Wow. <laughs> well, that is. That is good. <laughs> How long have you... Uh, I know it's a long time. How long have you been doing uh, stand-up comedy? This is my 42nd year. 42nd year. That's wow, good for you. Now, when you begin, uh, I don't care what you're doing as a career or a profession. As always, the early days are the toughest. Tell us about some lean times you might have. But wait a minute. You were with me in those lean times. Right. You, were, you drove up in that red pickup truck from Indianapolis. Dro drove a truck, yeah. yeah. And I was hitchhiking up and down Sunset Boulevard. Right. I went to, like any comic, I, I, I struggled for years. And, and I, I remember, you're talking about the economy being bad. I remember I was married. I got a wife, three kids. And I had one little side job. I got paid every two weeks while I was trying to be a comedian. And everybody was down on me. All the, the, the loan company. The guy kept calling. We what want our money. The, uh, the, what do they call them? The, the, uh, the associates loan. loan. I owned, owned a loan company. And, he kept, and I was behind in payments. And I was so frustrated and trying to make it as a comedian. And the guy called one time and I said, look, I'm going to tell you something. We owe 28 people. Hmm. My wife and I owe 28 people. I get paid every two weeks. Every two weeks, I put 28 names in a hat. And I draw out three. And I pay those three. You keep calling, I'm taking your name out of the drawing. <laughs> That's what you should do. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> yeah. He said. And then you, uh, uh, you were a bartender, was that in California or in yeah. Illinois? In, in Illinois. Yeah, what was that experience? You got, I mean, a bartender, is, you got to be a little of everything if you're a bartender. You got to be a comedian and a social worker and a nurse and on and on and on. An alcoholic. And, yeah, uh, that's yeah. right, yeah. Were you entertaining as a bartender? Yeah, I, well, you know, the, it, I told a lot of jokes behind the bar. Before I was ever a stand-up comedian, the first jokes I told were behind the bar. Yeah. It was almost like being on stage every night, being a bartender. You did, know. You, did you have one joke that always worked? Well, if you, if you had good I used to write clever material about the people in the neighborhood because it would relate to the neighborhood. But I would make up things, and, you know, those are the first jokes I wrote. But you have a, a couple of stock jokes. I had one that would always get a laugh. And, and it'd get bigger tips, we you know. Sure. So uh, with this one, I used to tell the audience, I'd say, yeah, there was a, a guy who was 93 years old. His wife was 91. They'd been married 71 years. He's on his deathbed. He calls her and he said, Helen, <clears throat> we've been married 71 years. Um, I only have moments to live. I need to know before I die, have you ever been unfaithful to me? She said, Harold, please don't ask me that. Don't ask me that at this time. He said, but I need to know. It's important. She said, well... Do you remember when we first got married and you had that job and you got fired and then a week later you got the job back with a raise? <laughs> he said, yes. She goes, well. He said, well, once isn't bad. She said, no, wait. <laughs> she said, remember years later when you owned your own business and um, the IRS was auditing you and a week later they dropped the audit and you actually got a refund? <laughs> he said, yes. She goes, well. He said, well twice as in bad. She said, no, wait. She said, do you remember when you were running for president of your country club and you were 25 boats short? <laughs> wait. And you won by 57 boats? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my That's goodness. <laughs> And I'd get tips for that. I would think so. Yes. Uh, now, an evening of laughter and the memories of Sinatra. And uh, traditionally, when you're on the program, we like to hear a little story about Frank and your time with him. You spent uh, close to 20 years with the man. Well, I toured with him 14 years. 14 years. Died. Was, I was with now, him. Was he a religious uh, sort of a fellow? Well, yeah. He, he certainly, we went to Mass all the time. Mm -hmm. We went to Mass at St. Francis of Assisi. We, he went to um, Our Lady Good Shepherd in Beverly Hills, but also down in, in uh, Indio, where he lived in, in Rancho Mirage. But, oh, by the way, 
I got this is cheap. But you want to get tickets for the show? It, oh, here it, I was going to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my job. Well, you do that. I was going to do that. Okay, TomBreeson.com. My daughter keeps saying, "Dad, you got to tell him where to get the tickets." Just relax. You handle that. Okay. <laughs> Dave will take care of it. Anyway. Anyhow. Yeah. No Q-tip crap for you. <laughs> I'll tell you, one, 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 there's a couple of great stories, but one, I'll tell you a real quick story. Frank had a way with words like no other artist I ever worked with. But I remember when I was working with him in Atlantic City at the Golden Nugget, and it was hot, and I kept thinking, boy, it's warm in here. It's warm in here. And I came off stage, and I stood in the wings, and knowing he would never take his jacket off in, in the show. And he's singing. He's wearing a tuxedo. Tuxedo, probably. and he'd yeah. never take it off. He was one of those old school guys. And about, I'm thinking, man, he, I'm warm. He must really be warm. And he would never pay any heed to it, because professionals know you never tell the audience Gee, it's warm in here, or they get warm. Mm -hmm. So he just had a way, he said, he was singing. You will be my music. You will be my song. Somebody throw a chair through a window. You will be my music. <laughs> <laughs> now listen to this. <laughs> there you go. An evening of laughter and memories of Sinatra, June 9th, uh, through the 11th at the Ruth Page Theater in Chicago, and you can uh, get tickets uh, by going to uh, Tom's uh, computer online thing. Tom what, Dreesen. I got com. it. I got it right here. You can go to his website, uh, Tom Dreesen. Dot uh, com. All, I'm going to do this. <laughs> TomDreesen.com. Yeah. There you go. Where and, else am I appearing? And you're also going to be at the... Uh, CD and Me. C in CD Frankfurt, and Me in, Illinois. in Frankfurt, Illinois. In June. the Acorn oh. Theater, July 2nd in Michigan. Okay, there you, there you go. Three, All right. Three Oaks, Michigan. Tom Dreesen, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with Leon.